quiet, secluded, traditional, and yet just off the well-traveled backpacker trail. This is Dong Lianhua, a small Islamic town in western Yunnan that feels old in a very good way. Many people may not associate Islam with China, but here in Dong Lianhua, the religion's roots run deep. From the times of the Southern Silk Road, right up through World War II, this hamlet has been a crossroads of historical importance. Together with my friend Frank, we've come to Dong Lianhua in search of Yunnan's ancient caravan trade route past. Uh, you can see that the place where we are right now, Weishan and Dali, like the Weishan Dali area, was, um, was a crossroad. There were also some of the caravan, the, the Magoto, around this area who were very influential. Here in Dom Lianhua, um, uh, there was a family called uh, Ma. Just coincidentally also named Horse. Also named Horse. The surname yeah. Horse. <laughs> it's very fitting. And um, there were three brothers in this village and they were quite the, quite the traders. So they went back already for a few generations. Horse caravans enriched this region for centuries, so much so that the locals say Dong Lianhua is a town built on a horse's back. And when calamity struck China in the 1930s and 40s, the importance of the old trading routes once again became apparent. So these uh, three Ma brothers, they didn't only build uh, like military schools and also got like army supplies over right. these routes to supply the armies to push back the, the Japanese. Okay. Well, it's interesting to think of the influence of the, of the Tin Horse Road extending into such recent history as well, mm -hmm. actually. We tend to think of it much more as an older thing. Yeah, it extended much, really, definitely into the 20th century, yeah. After learning more about the Tea Horse Road, Frank and I decided to visit one of the homes built by the Ma brothers. The Ma family household is one of Dong Lianhua's treasures, the perfect distillation of local Islamic architectural traditions. As luck would have it, the curators of this generously preserved compound invited me to help them make a traditional lunch of handmade noodles and spicy beef. Oh, this meat tastes delicious too. Mm, it's very nice. Is it supposed to be eaten with the bread or is that just because of your just a little, yeah, I don't know. western I just do inklings that always. to pair no. it up? This is an amazing courtyard. It looks very specifically like it's from Dali in this region more than it does specifically Muslim or Middle Eastern yep. architecture. Dali style, although you see here, other than in the E village, a little bit more special features of like the stuff that you don't see in the Dali Baza. So you, the Hue have a little bit more strongly their own style, also mm -hmm. because they, as a community, they have their own religion, uh, organized religion, Islam. And so they have a little bit more outspoken, their own cultural features. Following our lunch, we headed to the town's largest Qing Dynasty era mosque, the beating heart of Dong Lianhua. It's everything you would imagine, a religious center, a public gathering space, and an academic hub for the myriad Muslim communities dotting the surrounding plain. The mosque is almost entirely built of wood, and Islamic flourishes and accents are apparent everywhere. A looming watchtower at the center of the compound announces the call to prayer, standing in for the minarets commonly found at Middle Eastern places of worship. Dong Lianhua is a peaceful place a thoughtful place. But the modern day tranquility belies a complicated history stretching back more than 600 years. 
It is a history of military struggle and philosophical and cultural blending. Through it all, Islam has been a constant. Thanks for watching. This was just one of the many incredible places I got to visit on my month long journey across UNET. Like, share, and explore the rest of the province with me in this 12 episode series. It is the